do it. <laughs> Kick it on my goodbye again. <laughs> this place ain't big enough for both of us. <laughs> I just want to remind you that the exam is a week from yeah, Monday. A week from this coming Monday. In November, it's uh, November 4th. From Monday, November 4th. So basically, uh, we're going to have, what will be covered in the exam will be all only identities, nothing else. And uh, there will be identities, identities of sums and differences. You'll have to memorize all the identities up to now. But then I'll also, I may add an identity that's either for a, a double angle or a half angle, but I'll give you the formulas for those if you need them. So you'll see, as you want to memorize the basic identities of it. But uh, more than likely, the, the emphasis will be on this and on the previous identities, just the basic identity idea. Because that's what, they, that's what they're going to hold you to later. They, they, they don't accept, expect you to know the little nitty gritty ones. Uh, most teachers don't. Some some teacher might, but most most don't. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I, I want to continue doing identities, uh, doing these uh, tangents, doing this kind of identity here, so that you get enough experience to see the different ways of approaching it, or different ways that you can approach it. Uh, in the end, it comes down to your choice of what you want to do. But there's nothing like being handed a bag of tricks that actually work for some kinds of problems. Because if you, let's face it, if you, if someone said to you, without ever having seen anyone solve an identity, if they simply said to you, make this look like that, it would be pretty hard to figure out where to start. Because you know, you never did it before. You don't know what, what's possible. And you have to think about it a little bit. Well, people have thought about these things, and they've done them. so. They've had some trial and uh, success, so they want to show you the successes. So what they do is they show you the techniques they've evolved that actually work. And you have to then take those and add your own or change them or apply them when you think they'll work. And you have your own bag of tricks for identities. That's why people don't always do them the same way, because as, as you've noticed from what we're doing, there are actually lots of ways of doing these things. And these more difficult ones, I tend to get down to just one technique. And I, the only reason for that is so that I can just show you something. We'll just do something. We can sit around and look at it and say, what else could we do? And spend a whole class on one identity, really, and solve it, you know, half a dozen ways or something. But there's no point to that. The, the point is of, of doing the identities in class is actually to sort of stumble across all the techniques that are conventional. And that way you can get to actually see you know, solutions being done rather than trying to pick them to yourself. Uh, as it goes on this week, uh, on Friday, I'm going to start in on the homework problems. And then, at that time, I, I'd like to do is I'd like to have people come up with ideas. I mean, some people will have done some of the homework. And, and so you can give me some ideas about how to solve the, the different problems. Uh, some, of the, some of the homework problems are pretty tough, so you should start them early. There's going to, you, I don't think you can start on Sunday night and get them done. I, I don't think so. Not without it, you know, coming into class with the last one with bags under your eyes and everything. When you look at this thing, we do have a tangent of x plus y. We do have an identity that can get that down to tangents. On the other side, they have cotangents, which we don't have any identity for. Going from co cotangent of x plus y to 
So we don't have that's that's going to have to be some kind of an identity that works from the left hand side's x's and y's to the to the right hand side's x's and y's. So we have to get rid of that tangent of x plus y first, and then do the identity. Try to see what we can do after that. Okay. So the first step would be to eliminate this thing. What would you? What would you? What would this become right here? Ten, ten a plus ten b, ten ten x plus ten y. Uh, X and Y, that's right. I'm proud. I'll do anything you say. <laughs> tangent X plus, plus tangent Y. <laughs> Over 1 minus tan X, tan Y. Tan Y, right. By the way, what we did, what I just did, is so common. It's so common for people to memorize A's, A's and B's. And then when you're doing a problem like theta or something, you plug in an A and B. I've seen it many times. I don't really take much off of that. I mean, <laughs> I, I just can't, that, that isn't really a mistake, that's sort of like a, you know, you're, you're on, if, you, 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 if you guys drive, you know, it's like you're driving home and, and your car automatically goes in the driveway, you don't even have to think about it. Especially when you want to go someplace else, you're still going to go in the driveway because you're an automatic. Okay, so now that we get this and we get that, well, they don't quite look alike, do they? <coughs> they could look alike, though. Think about this. This is a case where you have four corners, just like the other day we had four corners, right? And the answer has four corners also. If we were lucky, if we judiciously took, found something to multiply this by all through, it would change this into that. Perhaps it would also change this into that, I mean this into that, and that into this. Uh, I don't know. It might not, it might not happen. It might happen. It's a possibility. What if we set it all to a negative exponent? Do what? <clears throat> what if we all set it all to negative 1? Multiply it all by negative 1? To a power of negative 1. Raise it to the power of negative 1? But we'll put, put oh, turn, one it, turn it upside down? Yeah, turn it all upside down. But how do, you, what do you, how do you compensate for that then? What do you do then? No, you, can't just, you can't just do something here without... It has to, whatever you do has to add up to 1. You know, multiplied by one, or you can't just do an operation because it has to be done on both sides then, which you can't do. Yeah, yeah. You multiply everything by one over tan x tan y. By one over tan x tan y. Tan x tan y. One over tan x tan y. Let's see what that would do. One over tan x tan x would be one over tan y, which would be cotangent. Let's do that. Ooh, kind of looks good, doesn't it? That, that actually looks pretty good. Just take this and multiply everything by 1 over tan x tan y. If you apply that to the first one, the tan x is canceled, and 1 over tan y is the cotangent, so that one works. So let's try it, see what happens. See, this is where, uh, this is where the experience comes in, because this thing looks doesn't look like that at all. I don't know what I'm going to do here. Okay, so you multiply that times this and you get uh, tangent of x over tan x tan y. Plus tangent of y over tan x tan y. All over 1 over tan x tan y. Minus tan x tan y or tan x tan y. Okay, go to work on this. This thing becomes the tan x is canceled, right? And you have 1 over tan y, so that becomes the cotangent, right? Everybody agree with that? Because this guy cancels right here. And you have 1 over tan y, which is the cotangent. So here comes the cotangent of uh, y. Uh oh, wait a minute. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. That's cotangent y, and this one over here becomes uh, the tan y is canceled, becomes the cotangent of x. And downstairs, this right here becomes 
the cotangent of x times the cotangent of y, right? Because that's 1 over 10 x is cotangent. 1 over 10 y is the cotangent. So you end up with the cotangent of x and y here. And over here, you end up with 1. Because these cancel out. Now, the reason why the upstairs is backwards is because it's just, you can put it either way you want. So this really is, this really is the cotangent of x plus the cotangent of y over, uh, yeah, cotangent x, cotangent y minus 1. That's it. So the strategy is, as he said, you get this thing right here and you get these four things. One, two, three, four, and you kind of, if you can multiply something by this to make this into that, then you can check to see if it actually does it all the way through. And it does. This doesn't always work, by the way. It could possibly not work. And then you'd be faced with a different <coughs> proposition. For example, supposing it didn't work, supposing mathematically that didn't turn out to be right, it didn't work right, this stuff all turned out not to, to be junk or something. Then you, then you have the thing is where you get a, a plus b, you can try multiplying it by a minus b over a minus b, see what that does. In other words, you could try doing conjugates, that's another approach of solving problems like this. And, uh, but this is one. And, and the, big, the big thing is, uh, in, in this particular case right here, like when you go to this, the, the big thing is when you, tr when you do that multiplication, you're going directly from this to the answer. So the answer is involved. You're looking at the answer and you're looking at this to see what has to ha happen. If you go the way where you're going to have to multiply by the conjugate, you can see it's going to be much more complicated. And you can't immediately look at this and say, that's going to come out of my, my multiplication. It's going to be a long ritual. So uh, it, there's a thing called Occam's razor. Did you ever hear of it before? Occam's razor? Essentially, it's a, do, uh, the message of it is to take the shortest route to the answer and do it, do it in the most elegant way. Think, think to, the easiest way is, is the obvious, what's true. Don't, don't overcomplicate it. So this thing here, if it, if it turned out to be a simple solution, take advantage of it. Don't overcomplicate things. By the way, that is a, that is a basic problem for beginners in this field, uh, in this uh, identities. What happens is you get a whole bag of tricks. And before you actually think about why you should use a trick, you, you apply one. And, and the trick you apply is just you randomly pick it out of a hat or something. And if you do that, what happens then is the trick is missing the obvious. Something is more obvious here, and you're not seeing it. You're, you're seeing, you know, you're just trying to bulldoze it. You're going to say, oh, I'll do this and get an answer. Uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't always work well. So the thing is, if you can use your head, think about it. If you look at this and you think about it a little bit, you say, well, this has got four things, and that's got four things. Maybe I can make it into something. C kind of keep your, an idea of where you're going when you start off. And if there's no idea, then whatever. Whatever you do is, is good. OK. I wish I could just tell you how to do these, but as you can see, that there isn't any real answer to that. It, it all depends on which things come to your mind, when they come to your mind, how you've oriented all these things. So there isn't, it isn't like, uh, you know, you can plug a, uh, in a calculator, you can plug in a formula and it'll give you the answer for x. But identities, it takes a much more complex programming job to make, solve one of these things. I mean, it's not like an easy deal to do. Oh, this one. Okay. This is a weird one, though. Cotangent x. Cotangent y. plus y is on the right hand side this time, so you're in kind of a funny situation. The fact that you have cosines and sines on, on the right hand side though, suggests, and you have cotangents and tangents on the other side, suggests at least you try to get the same kind of functions in there, doesn't it? I mean, that's kind of obvious thing. If you get into sines and cosines, 
be a little bit closer. Does that make sense as a, as a, as a starting point? So if I wanted to turn these two guys into sines and cosines, what would it look like? So tell me, what would that look like? Cosine over sine? Minus sine over cosine. Minus cosine y over sine y. So far so good. <coughs> what? You got sine over cosine. Oh, they're saying it's cotangent and tangent, so I'll do that again. Thank you. You guys are more awake than the afternoon class. I can do the afternoon class. I can get already into something and be erasing it. Someone will say, all right, wait a minute. <laughs> I can't do it on purpose. <laughs> OK, so what do we got? You got one, <coughs> you got one term on the right. You have two terms here, so you probably want to get it down to one term, huh? Common denominator, which is these guys, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's cosine blah blah blah. Uh, uh, minus uh, sine of x, sine of y, and it's all over this thing right here. Uh, sine of x, cosine of y. And then it just goes straight into cosine x plus y. Goes right straight. This thing right here yeah. is the answer. That is this right here. Does that agree? It's identity. So that we can convert this immediately into that. And sine x, this one y. And this. That's the first one we had. I think it went in that direction. If I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm wrong. But that, that's that is. Uh, we have to turn this stuff into that. It goes both ways. I mean, you can have it either way. Because in a scientific you know, research, you don't know what you're going to get. You get some formula, and you have to actually work some equation. You have to work with it. So that's, does, that, does that kind of make sense, the, the strategy? Well, it's kind of clean. It? It, it looks clean when you're doing it on the board. And when you get home alone, and you look at this thing, you say, now, what do I do with this? And your, your brain has to go through kind of Translation. But first of all, you, you look at this and look at that and say, well, I, I don't have sines and cosines here, and I do over there, so maybe I could try that. You see, that's why we tried that. We to try. It might not work, by the way. It might, it might work, but it might take a long solution. But you try things just to see what happens. Be sure you have erasers on your pencils. <laughs> because identities are awful. I mean, they really are awful. <clears throat> and, and that's the reason why in the exams, even though I give you, I'll give you a new identity as far as the letters are concerned or some variation, the techniques will be exactly the same. You, I'll, I'll ask you to do something that you could actually come, if you just watch the, what goes on on the board, you'd be able to do it. Uh, it's not because I want you to be ritualized, but because uh, basically we're, well, all I can show you is a bag of tricks. What else can I show you? I can say, this is an identity, solve it, and that's it. There's nothing else to say except the few little tricks you can use. That's, that's, what makes it, that's what makes a class out of it. Okay. Pull out this one. No, oh, I'm going to that one first. Let me, let me just stop here for a second. I, I, I want to be sure I'm doing the right thing. Is, is, any, is anybody appreciate, is, is this worthwhile? Is, I mean, really, yeah, would you rather have me introduce new material? No. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this is actually... <laughs> Okay, I just want to be sure that this is worthwhile. Because if you know, I, I'd be, I'd be wrong to I'd try to impose something on you that you're just enduring. Okay. 
sine co he wants to convert these into sine and cosines because of sines over there. There's no cosines made the cosines of this appear. So if you turn this into sine and cosines, you get uh, sine of a, yeah, cosine of a. Now it becomes sine of b over cosine of b. That becomes uh, sine of a over cosine of a uh, minus sine of a uh, sine of b over cosine of b. First time. Something mm -hmm. with, what would you do then? You got this little setup here. Can you um, flip the bottoms and then multiply it by the top? Uh, you need a one term on the top and one So can I? You mean, oh, you can't do that. Oh, I guess you can't. Never mind. They haven't got a common denominator. If I yeah. get a common denominator, I could do that. Okay. They have a common denominator. Well, Zach, what would you say to do with the bottom? Someone had a. Not a I just said you couldn't get it yet until you have one term on top and bottom. Yeah, so we, get the, we, we want to do is get a common denominator for top and bottom, right? Yep. So we can, we can actually deal with these things. So those, these are two different fractions. I want to put them together. So that means cosine b times that, cosine a times that will give you the common denominator, cosine a, cosine b. So let's do this one first. You get uh, <coughs> sine a times cosine b plus... Uh, sine b times cosine a upstairs like so and it's over uh, it's over cosine a cosine b <laughs> and then in the denominator you get cosine b times that cosine a times that so you get uh, sine a cosine b uh, Minus uh, sine b uh, minus uh, cos uh, sine b cosine a. I gotta I gotta change the order of these things. I'm not gonna, I'm not ordering them correctly. But we'll do that in a second. Cosine a cosine b. Okay. At this point, you can see what has to happen, right? You clean up those those denominators and be cleaned up. They just cancel because they don't have the same denominator. Yeah, if you uh, if you uh, invert and multiply, they would just cancel, and then you'd have the the positive numerator yes. over the numerator at the bottom. Over that one there. <coughs> okay, but well, I'm going to do this now. Here's what we have left after that happens. We have this thing over this thing. But I'm going to rearrange these guys right here. Okay, and I'm going to rearrange these guys right here. No, it's sine b times cosine a is the same thing as cosine a times sine b. It's the same thing, right? So I can change these guys around. This isn't going to hurt anything. So here's what happens. I end up with cosine of a, cosine of b, plus cosine of a, sine of b. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? That looks like something over there. And the denominator you have sine of a cosine b minus cosine a sine b. And that looks like something over there also, which happens to be this over that, right? That's that's just the identity, that's all it is. Make sense? So this is once you see this, you know this right here is the sine, this thing right here. And this one right here is the uh, negative of it, so it's that one right here. So therefore, this is sine of a plus b, and then here you have sine of a minus b, that's qed, qed, what's qed, qed means quad erat demonstrandum. Thus, thus it is shown. Some such truth. This is Latin, right? I just make it up. I don't know why. You make up anything. Ironically, this whole thing came from Greek. I don't know why we ended up using it because we didn't have Greek letters. 
It sounds better. Quadro or two quadro. Okay, pompous. Okay, so there we have another one. Next case. No questions about that? Okay. No, so far I'm liking the ones that come backwards, but I the ones that go forward. You like the ones backwards? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I get, they get mixed up too. Well, that, that one doesn't. If they do get mixed up, you, get, you have something on one side, and it, it's got a sum, and the other side's got a sum, and they both have regular angles. It's just really weird. But well, I just want to get you ready for any possibility that comes up. I just did this one. I'm not hanging out. Some of these I might duplicate. I want to be sure I don't do the same one twice. Okay, that's uh, minus six. All these you know, little tricks in them, you gotta do something. Somebody tell me what to do here. Do we have a cotangent of x minus y? Uh-uh, we don't. But we have something that can do the same job, don't we? Would it be the team that just, you flip it? Yeah, which, which is, what, we don't have this, but we do have this. Another way of saying the same thing is to say 1 over a tangent of x minus y. That's the same thing, really. Cotangent equals one over the tangent. Now we can deal with this thing, can't we? Because we have that right. Uh, is it minus? Yes. Uh, we have this right here. So really, what we have is one. I'm going to spread it out because it's not. That's all we could possibly do because we have single angles over there. So what we have down below here is. I'm going to put it like that. So we have uh, tangent of x minus tangent of y over 1 plus tangent x tangent y. If I rearrange that, what does it really look like? If I put it in its proper fraction, position, what would it look like? This is 1 over this fraction, right? If you have 1 over a fraction, you have 1 over 1 over b, what do you do? You, want to, you don't want to leave it like that, right? If I have 1 over x over y, what is that really? Y over X. Y over X. Yeah. You can go through the real world, but that's what it comes out. This thing flips up here. So this really is. I'm going to go this way. I normally don't do this, but the board is too small to do otherwise. So what you really have here is 1 plus tangent of X, tangent of Y, over uh, tangent of X minus tangent of Y. That's really what you have. We've seen this one before today, haven't we? How can I get from there to the, to the answer? Is 
Can we do the same thing we did before? Multiply one over tangent. Yes, multiply it by what? One over tangent. Yes. And the reason why, oh, tangent, 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 right. If you take this thing right here and you want to translate it into this right here, what I could do is I can multiply this by uh, 1 over tangent x tangent y, which comes upstairs to become cotangent. And if you multiply this by 1 over tangent x tangent y, it becomes 1. So therefore, right away, you can see that if I do that, the top is going to be, that must be what's going to happen. That must be the answer. So again, you get these four things. Do, 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 do. And these four answers, do, 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 do. and you simply want to get them to look alike. So you multiply this by 1 over the tangent of x tangent of y over 1 over tangent of x tangent of y. There you have it. You multiply this thing through here, you get this. First, when you get the multiply, you get 1 over tangent x tangent y plus tangent x tangent y over tangent x tangent y. <coughs> so those are going to work out. You can see those are going to work out. That's going to be two cotangents and a one, which is nice. And then the bottom one goes like this. It's tangent of x over tan x tan y. So y right there. So where's tan y? I've ever written. Okay. Tan again. Y uh, plus uh, plus uh, tan y uh, minus rather. Right? Well, this thing works right right here. That becomes one over co that becomes a cotangent x cotangent y. Why do I see that? Why that's true? And this one here, the tan x is canceled, the tan y is canceled. They're both the same. So it gives you one. Look upstairs, the numerator is perfect. Tan x over tan x cancels out. It leaves you with one over tan y, which is the cotangent of y. And tan y over tan y cancels out, gives you one over, gives you one over the tangent of x, which is the cotangent of x. That's the answer. So in this one here, the only difficulty with this one here I'm gonna have to have electrodes planted here. Huh? Okay, the only, the only trouble with this one here is that uh, the, only, the only new thing in this one here is that you've got this thing here which you can't do and you have to turn it into something you can do. Once you get there, it's just sort of following your nose. I mean, we're doing the same techniques we've been using right along. Okay, and that takes care of it. Does that make sense? Are we all right with this? Any other questions? Can you wait through that last step? What? Can you wait through that last step? Can I wait to erase it? Wait, sure. Oh, are, you, are you copying it? Still copying it. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I erase that. <laughs> I erase something. Uh, on your, on, your uh, on quizzes and exams, it wouldn't look like this, of course. It would, you'd have this, 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 that, and underneath it, you'd have this, and, and I'm sorry, this, this, this and this. They would, they would all be in order. Do, 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 do. They would, no, don't put any sideways arrows like that. Uh, I realize that it wastes paper to, do, to uh, not do that. But the trouble is when you use the arrows, and I'm telling you, this is true from experience, it starts to get in a position where people actually make mistakes that are, they wouldn't make otherwise. If you have something above and you go right straight down to it, you can see it going down. When you start going sideways, all of a sudden parentheses start disappearing and all kinds of stuff starts happening. Don't do that. Say something equals, it should look like this. You should write some group equals, next thing equals, next thing equals. It should always be like that, and then probably the answer equals the original thing right there. That should be, that should be what it looks like.
Don't do any sideways things if you can help it. So we're going to have an appropriate amount of space on the exams, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> well, it's just a matter of uh, its readability. That's what it comes down to. Identities are particularly hard to correct because somebody can be right, and, and if you don't, if I don't look long enough, I might see, you know, I may not see the jump they made. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the jumps are too big, and, and I don't accept that I take force off for it. But the jump is normal. It just happens to be something that's tricky. But can I tell you about now? Okay. Somebody want to try it? Did you just spread this out? Somebody tell me what that looks like. Based on over here. Sine of 3 pi. Sine of x. Uh, you say sine of x? Cosine x. Cosine of x. <laughs> Minus cosine of 3, uh, 3 pi. Sine of x. Sine of x. Let me see where he is. Just simply use this rule right here, right there, where a is three pi and b is x. Okay. What is the sine of what is three pi? What angle is that really? It, it's just pi. It's 180 degrees. Because right? two pi brings you back to the beginning, and one pi more brings you to 180 degrees. So it's 180 degrees. So what is the, that's like the sine of pi. What is the sine of pi? Zero. Zero. Times the cosine of x, which we don't know. Minus, what's the cosine of 3 pi? Negative 1. Negative 1. And that negative becomes? Positive. Positive 1. So that becomes 1 times the sine, times the sine of x. So you get the sine of x. Right, this one disappears. You know, the sine of x. Makes sense? Will we, will we often run into them on the exam where they have values and when we have to solve for them? When you, when you have what? When we run into a few on the exam that are like this where you have to actually solve the values in order to get rid of them. Oh, you mean just to demonstrate that? Like, sure. Well, just, no, I'm saying like, just like that, will we probably run into a few on the exam? Yeah. It'll, it'll be something like this, probably one. Like this, yeah. So why did it switch to plus in the third step there? One more time. Why did it switch to plus in the third step? Why the plus? Okay, why this plus here? Yeah. Because uh, uh, cosine of three pi was negative one. See, see oh. yeah, see cosine, uh, you get cosine uh, of two pi is here, and one more pi is over here. So where you are really is over here. That's where you are in that quadrant there, right? So you go right down into this guy. And what happens is, it means that the, it, what you're saying is, what is the cosine of this angle here, really? The first two pi's bring you around to where you were before. Then the, the, the last pi brings you to the uh, 180 degrees. And we know that the uh, cosine of 180 degrees is minus 1 over 1, which is just minus 1. Okay. Any other questions about that? Uh, I'm going to drop this in. I'm going to ask you a question right now. Simplify this one here. <clears throat> what does that simplify into? Somebody, let me know. Tell me what that. I want to get rid of the minus signs. I don't like them. So what do we? What do we got? B minus cosine x. 
That's it. The minus doesn't come out of the cosine. This is the way cosine works. Cosine of an angle is equal exactly to the cosine of minus that angle. They're exactly the same thing. We substitute these two. It doesn't change anything. So I can make that cosine of x right away, and nothing changes. There's no sign that has to come out of it. Sine is not true, but the sine's different. It's minus the sine theta equals the sine of minus theta. So in that case right there, what happens if you have a minus and pull it out, it's got to go in front. But that's not the case here. Okay. So what about the next one, though? Minus sine x. Minus sine x, right? There we go with that. How about this one here? Let's ask a different one. And I said, uh, So how we're going to simplify that? What would it simplify into? Well, what, what, what's this one do right here? It's the same thing as cosine squared of x. That's cosine squared of x. Everybody agree with that? You pull the minus out? OK. What about the next one? Actually, minus sine squared. Still plus. What? Minus sine squared x. You think it's minus sine squared x? Yeah. How, many say it's, how many of you say it's minus sine squared x? Nobody dares to say that. Come on. No, no, no. no. It's because it's squared. Oh. Um, so even if it is negative, it's squared anyway. So. Mm. That's what you really have there, right? That's a, that's a square. So as he says, this, this minus comes out here and changes it to minus. But then this one comes out and changes it back again. So what you end up with is cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, which is what? One. So that's the answer to that. See, so if it's squared, be careful of that. And here's another one you've got to be careful of is two. If, suppose you had sine cubed of x. Like that. Somebody tell me what that would be if you simplify. Someone knew. <laughs> so, someone knew. What, would, what would that come out to? Plus or minus sine cubed? Minus. I'm on camera. <laughs> what? Plus or minus sine cubed, which is going to be? Who says minus sine cubed? Wait, is that in the... Okay, never mind. That's a minus. Because what you have is a sine of minus x times sine of minus x times sine of minus x. The first one makes it minus, the second one makes it plus, the third one makes it minus equal. That's plus or minus. That's plus or minus. What? <laughs> okay, so we're all set. I just want you to be aware of that because that, that, that's the thing that, that comes up a lot. These things in powers come up a lot. You've got to be careful of that. Don't just say, oh, that sine is minus, therefore it's minus. Be careful of that. Okay, here's a weirdo. What angle is pi over 600 degrees? 30. 30 degrees, right? It's complicated with a lot of stuff in it, doesn't it? The pi is not all this. But actually, if you look at the left hand side, you realize what you have is a sum of two angles. So you use the sine sum of two angles formula, right? And this comes out to this thing right here, right? Agree? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess the question here is, uh, 
what is the sine of pi over 6 and what's the cosine of pi over 6? Now, pi over 6 is 30 degrees, right? That's 30 right there. 1, 2, 3. So, what's the sine of pi over 6? Negative square root of 3. Square root of three. Oh, no, not negative, sorry, just square root of 3 over 2. Oh. 1 over square root of 3. 1 over square root of 2. Wait, 1 over 2. That's <laughs> not what a combination is. <laughs> yeah, it's the side opposite over the hypotenuse. And there's the angle right there, so it's the side opposite over the hypotenuse. So, it's one half. But that right there. And this is the cosine of x, we don't know what that is. Now, what's the cosine of pi over 6? Adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, looking at that from angle 30. Square root of 3 over 2. Yes. So square root of 3 over 2 times the sine of x. Is that equal to that up there? Yes. If you pull the half out. You pull the half out times the cosine of x. Half of that gives you uh, plus square root of 3 sine of x. There it is. Factor out the one half. Okay. Uh, you guys have to learn these. You should know what the sines, cosines, and tangents mean. For the 30s and 60s and 45 degrees, you have to learn those. Or you have to be able to derive them pretty quickly. Can you, how did you get the um, square root, root of 3 over 2 from that? Can you do what with it? Oh, never mind. Yeah, if that was okay. the denominator, you'd rationalize it. It's not the denominator. Yeah. Don't forget, you don't like roots in the denominator. That's simply because of arithmetic reasons. It's, it's hard to deal with. You get a common denominator with a radical in there. It's kind of hard to figure it out, so you just they don't like that. They pull all the radicals upstairs, just like we do with the government. Okay, next case. It's 10 o'clock, I'm already being polluted. <laughs> What's next? What was this one? Well, if we'll try this on paper and see what you can do. See what your approach would be and see what it kind of looks like if you can get it to work. See if you if, if actually because I don't think there's anything new here that we haven't done already. Sorry, so you got hey, I wrote this code. There should be a minus right here. There should be a minus on that side. Well, first thing you gotta do is open this guy up, right? Everybody do that? No. Okay. Tell me if you got this is what you should have gotten. Cosine of pi, pi over 4. And this is a cosine deal, so it's both a cosine. Change signs. Sine of pi, pi over 4. Times uh, sine of x. Okay. Everybody get that? Okay, so that part wasn't too bad, was it? This part right here is a little bit funny, but 5 pi over 4, what is that? Well, that's really... Negative square root. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's 5 pi over, pi over 4 is 45 degree angle, right? 
four of those at 180 degrees. So basically what you are is you're in the third quadrant. You're basically right here. Halfway through the third quadrant. Yeah. Four of these guys is one, two, three, four. And the fifth one brings you over to here. That's where you are. This is 45 degrees here, just a pi over four. That's what this is right here. So you know. You know you have a 45 and a 45, right? One, one, that's minus one, minus one, root two. And that's what you have. 45 has one to one. They're both minus because they're in this quadrant down here. So that's the triangle you have right there. So you say, well, what is the cosine of this angle right here? Uh, of this angle right here? That's just negative square root two over two. It's negative one half, one over root two. Everybody go with that? It's negative one, the cosine is negative one over the root two of that, of that, of that angle right there. Yeah, but you got to take the right by the bottom. And it'll yeah. be negative square root of two over two. Yeah, we'll have to take care of this in a second, but okay. to start off with, that's what you are. And the sine of it, well, in this case, the sine and the cosine are exactly the same, aren't they? Numerically, they're always the same for 45 degrees. The sine and the cosine are both 1 over root 2. In this case, because it's in the third quadrant, both the cosine and the sine are both negative. So therefore, they're still perfectly equal. Don't forget, all students up here wouldn't be true because sine would be positive, cosine would be negative. Take tangents positive here, but the other two are negative. In calculus, cosine would be negative here and the sine would be positive, so it wouldn't work here. So it wouldn't work here and it wouldn't work here. So that's the that's where it has to be. Yeah. Okay. So in this case right here, what you have is the sine of this, which is the same thing as minus one root of two times sine x. <coughs> when you factor it out, you get minus one over root of two. I haven't done anything with it yet. But cosine of x uh, plus sine of x. But then. You rationalize this guy right here and you get minus root of 2 over 2 times cosine of x plus sine of x. And there it is. That's the answer. Yeah. So the only thing here you've got to think about, there's only a couple things you have to think about. Uh, one is this right here, you know how to do that because it's like a formula. You just plug it in, you get answers. Then what you have to think about is this thing here has a real value, it has a numerical value. And you've got to realize that this is 45, 45 degree angles is what this is. The first four brings you to 180 degrees, and the next one brings you into the third quadrant. And then you just simply either draw a picture in your head or know the answer. You can know the answer. All students take calculus will also give you the answer. So if you knew that 1 over root of 2, 1 over root of 2 is the cosine and the sine of 45, all you have to do then is think about it. You say all students take t, 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 tangents the only positive in that quadrant, therefore both of the other guys are negative. And then you'd know right away that they were both going to be negative. It, it, it depends on how you want to think about it, but you can think of it either way. There you go. Next case. Is that okay? Any problems with that? No questions? I'm getting up there. You ought to take a look at the homework, though, because I, I think you're going to find them uh, terrifying. <laughs> I think that's the word that comes to mind. I don't think they're that bad. But Confidence. But they're not that bad. They're not really that bad. Try this one here. See if you can do this on your own. I think everybody in here can do this one after what we've been doing. This seems like something that's doable to you. Are you?
Anybody got that? Tell what you did. Um, so I put it in the FBI tangent form, um, tangent A minus tangent B, which would be tangent 45 minus tangent theta, <coughs> over 1 plus tangent 45 tangent theta, then tangent 45 is equal to 1. So what would you say? This one here, this equals 1? No, that equals 45 degrees, and then tangent 45 degrees is 1. It's 45 degrees, so that's, yeah, tangent is 1, right? Everybody agree with that? Yep. Yeah. So that comes out to just 1, okay. I actually double check myself out here, and so I was like, wow, this seemed like way easier than I thought it was going to be. Did it work for you? Yeah, I, w I went through it, and I was like, wow, this seemed really easy. I double checked myself to make sure I was right. How does it equal 1? How well? How does it equal 1? How does it equal 1? Tangent 45 degrees is 1. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Any, any that actually have pi's in them and stuff, you actually know the angle. Pi's not, not a variable, it's actually a known quantity, okay? It's pi. Okay, and this one right here, so then you have a 1 plus tangent of pi over 4, which is 1, right? Times that, and that's all you have left. Because that right there turns into 1. Just one. Uh, I don't have an identity for this, but I'm going to show you something, another little trick that comes up occasionally. Okay. Supposing, uh, supposing the answer here was uh, well, it doesn't work with this one. Okay, I can't do. I, can, I have to give you a demonstration, but no, I can't give it to you unless I. Uh, Get rid of all this stuff. We we'll just assume that this right here is an expression you have. No, never be afraid. Supposing I have this in this tan of uh, 45 degrees, this pi of uh, pi over 4 right here. And this over here is. Uh, this over here is uh, tangent of pi over 4. Suppose you got a problem that kind of looked like this. Uh, and they wanted you to come up with something that looked like this. They wanted you to come up with something like that. You can see what happens is, it's possible to replace this with that. That's exactly the same thing. And this thing here, if you multiply it by 1, that's the same thing as multiplying it by this. So therefore you can, you can put, this becomes this just because that is a 1. So in other words, it happens sometimes in these identities where uh, you have a tangent of something that actually can become 1 or it can disappear. And it can reappear as a product, like right here. It can reappear as uh, another term you're adding. It appears, it can appear, disappear, and you can make that happen. And sometimes that allows you to do some cross canceling you may want to do. So I'm just telling you that, and that's a that's a possibility. Uh, I'll see if I can find a good problem that demonstrates it. But that's so a, the identity we're looking for is sometimes unsimplified. What is sometimes unsimplified? Yeah, yeah. If you well, uh, usually what happens? It isn't quite that way. It's usually. This thing is, it appears in the, in the original thing, and then it appears in the answer in a different place. You say, how did it get there?